This is Baby Metal. It's a 150 gram ant weight combat robot with a circular saw that runs at 40,000 RPM. It's powered by a 3S battery and has a 4 bar mechanism to deliver that saw exactly where an opponent doesn't want it. It's fair to say that despite its diminutive stature, it's one scary and angry little beast. So before we get into some gratuitous violence against old robot chassis, let's rewind a bit and see how this thing came to be. So, it's December 1999, and with that brings Season 3 of Robot Wars. And with this season comes a redesign of one of the house robots, Dead Metal. The new version featured a much larger saw blade, and a mechanism that allowed to very slowly feed that saw into the competitors' robots. And for young, impressionable me, it was the epitome of cool. That planted a seed that one day it might be fun to build something like that. More recent times have seen the rise in popularity of sawbots again, with Mako in the US Beetleweight scene frequently bifurcating its opponents, and Dissector doing similar things to UK Antweights. Hey, wait a second, that's my Antweight. Hey, stop! There comes the saw and immediate tap out! So, it seems as good a time as any to build my own. Now, I could start designing something from scratch. However, I have a nice starting point just sat there in Project SVRN. And if you haven't seen that yet, it's an open source modular robot that I've designed to help people get into combat robotics. The chassis from this seems like a perfect starting point. So, let's take one and turn it up to 11. The plan is relatively straightforward. Make a module that bolts onto the stock chassis, and then cut any unneeded weight out of the design so we have enough left over for our new weapon system. The majority of the weight saving comes from two places. Firstly, I'm using belt drive, so we'll only have two N10 motors rather than four. This saves approximately 15 grams when accounting for the axles that are needed to make the belt drive work. To make this system compatible with the existing chassis, I've designed two plates that clamp on either side of the chassis wall, and an M3 fastener and an aluminium standoff are used to compress them together, and the aluminium standoff becomes our axle. The second place where we can make a pretty major saving is the side armour. Now on the standard Project SVRN, the side armour is pretty thick and beefy, and it can take some serious abuse. To make weight for this design, we're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of durability and remove some of that thickness from the armour. I've also had to sacrifice the rear wheel guard element as well. Now one place we could have saved a little bit more weight is on the mechanism used to feed in the saw. The simplest option would have been to mount the motor straight onto a long arm attached to the servo. However, this means for each degree that the servo turns, the arm moves quite a large distance. And as such, the amount of material being removed by each tooth gets very high, and this means it's more likely to stall the saw. The linkage reduces the amount of movement the saw has per degree of servo rotation. This decreases the chip load on the saw, and hopefully means that it's much less likely to stall out. So, now we have a CAD model, and a little bit of time has passed for the parts in order to arrive. It should be a pretty straightforward build process, right? Well. There are, however, a few added complications. Firstly, the addition of the brushless motor needed to power the saw means this is going to draw a lot more current and need a much larger battery than the base SVRN does. And secondly, to prevent the saw from stalling, ideally I'd like to have a higher battery voltage, so 3S instead of the regular 2S that are run for the control bots. And this causes problem number three. If I'm running a higher battery voltage, the servo won't be able to cope, so we'll need to regulate that voltage down to make it safe for the servo. Now luckily for me, this is a more general problem in RC, and there's a few off-the-shelf regulators that do this quite well. The saw blade I've selected for this project is a 0.2mm slitting saw, and I've done this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, being 0.2mm, it's very thin, and therefore lightweight, so we can squeeze it into the design. And secondly, if we cut a thinner slot, we require less force to do it. The other parts that we'll use for this build are a bit more conventional. I have two Wranglebox N10 motors, a Malenki Nano HV, a Bristol Bot Builder's brushless ESC, and your regular power switch. So, now we have a plan and our components, it's time to fire up the 3D printer, get the parts printed, solder all the electronics together, and get this thing made. And if you enjoy projects like this, there's plenty more in the pipeline, so subscribe to the channel for more, give the video a like if you're enjoying it, and tell me what you'd like to see in future videos down below. First up, we're going to need a hole to pass the wires through for the brushless motor and servo. Now, the regular SVRN chassis have these built in, however this is an early prototype one I had lying around and it doesn't have the hole, so uh, it's time to get the drill out. Now, while this isn't the neatest job, it'll do for now. Next up, we've got the heat certs.
That's the chassis prepped, so next is the electronics. I start out by trimming a couple of wires that we're going to use to piggyback the regulator for the servo off the BBB brushless ESC power pads, and then they're soldered in place. The other end of these wires are then soldered to the small pads on the regulator. I'm also using these same pads for power distribution for the servo power. This makes for a fiddly soldering job trying to keep three cables in place at once. With that done, that leaves us with two trailing signal wires, one for the servo and one for the brushless motor ESC. These will need to be soldered very carefully to two pads on the Malenki. However, there's a few things to do first. Next, I'll tin the N10 wrangle box motors and add the wires. Then we'll solder and heat shrink the switch. We're going to skip ahead a little bit now. Solder the power switch and the brushless ESC to the Malenki. And now I need to sort the power connector. One of the more unusual things with this wiring setup is I'm going to have to use the balance lead to power the robot. Uh, this is because the Robe Swap batteries that I got have a very small power connector on them with very light gauge wire and I don't think it'll cope with the current that I'm going to be drawing. By comparison, the balance leads are relatively beefy. The last steps of finishing up the electronics are soldering in the drive motors and the weapon motor. And in this particular instance I'll be using little bullet connectors for the brushless. This makes life a lot easier and means I don't have to solder the wires through the chassis. However, it comes with the downside of adding a little bit of weight. With all that done, let's plug in a battery, have a quick test and make sure no magic smoke escapes. Brilliant, the transmitter binds, there's no obvious electrical issues, so it looks like it's time to hook up a servo, and of course the brushless motor. Now I was a little bit excited about this, and the prints hadn't actually finished for a lot of the parts, so I kind of cobbled something together with a few prototype pieces, just so I could get to see everything working together a little bit earlier. And first impressions with a little twitch test on the bench are pretty fantastic. It seems like it's going to be really quick and the weapon motor seems capable of some serious speed. I'm also happy that I've got the feed rate for the saw with the servo and the linkage about right. Next I threw together the belted system to just see how it will drive with the four wheel drive. I played around with this for a little while to get the rate set about right and overall I'm pretty happy with it. I will be open sourcing the belted system in the near future so for those that want to run heavier weapons on their SVRN kits the files should be available on printables to download soon. A little bit of time has passed and the printer is now finished with all the parts. I've got everything assembled, so it's time to put this thing in the test box behind some rather thick polycarbonate and see what it can do. Okay, that was a little underwhelming. So on a little bit of closer inspection, it seems that the saw is actually spinning backwards. So what we've done is melted our way into the chassis and then got stuck to it. It's nothing that swapping a few phase wires can't fix, so I'll do that, and let's try again. And that's why test boxes are really important. So the saw, left. I wasn't initially sure why that had happened, so I tightened the saw back on and gave it another go. Now that is much more like it, a nice clean cut all the way through the chassis. However, one thing I'm starting to notice is that over time the saw seems to be getting less effective. It's also started jamming, and if you listen closely, it's making a slightly different noise too. After freeing the saw, I thought I'd give a couple more cuts a go to try and figure out what the cause of these issues is. Yeah, that wasn't good. So, another set of bolts backed out, and that indicates that one of the problems we're having here is vibration. 
This is also supported by the change in noise heard in one of the previous tests. So, what's causing it, and how do I fix it? Having a look at the weapon assembly once I'd taken it out of the box, it became obvious that the weapon wasn't spinning concentrically, and the saw was hopping slightly. This causes two problems. First, the chip load, or the amount of material removed per tooth of the saw, becomes uneven. This means that depending on where the saw is in its rotation, it will either take deep or shallow cuts. This makes the saw much more likely to saw out and bind up. Secondly, it's also the cause of our vibration. Luckily the fix is relatively simple, I just need to move the holes that clamp the saw to the hub further out, so the bolt is nearly tangential to the inside edge of the saw blade. This should mean that physically the saw can't shift and will remain centred. With those improvements made, it's time to put it back in the test box and let's see how we get on. So I have to say I'm pretty pleased with that. It gets through PLA really easily and with TPU it can make its way through, you just have to go a little bit slower or the saw snags. There's still a little bit left to do with this robot before it's competition ready. I need to slightly tweak the geometry so it's a little bit easier to self-write and lose a little bit of extra weight so I can have a cover over the servo cables and neaten everything up a little. That's it with Baby Metal for the day, however I've got a few channel updates that I want to run through now. You may have noticed uploads have been a bit thin on the ground for a while, and that's because I've had a few big projects that I've been working on. Firstly, I've been rebuilding my Beetleweight, ready for the UK Beetleweight Championships. Many of the parts for that build have been provided by PCBWay, and I can't wait to share that project with you, and a big thank you to them for helping out. So many of the parts would have been impossible without them, as I don't have access to 5-axis machining at home, and I can't work with titanium either. So if you've got some parts that you really love to have made, but you don't have the machines to make them, I highly recommend giving them a look. Secondly, there are several new SVRM modules on the way, and thanks to everyone who's built the design, shared feedback on it, and shared it on printables. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for more coming soon.